Hello, this is the Wool Wider Podcast. Come and escape into a world of knitting with me. Hello lovely knitters, welcome to the Woolwinder podcast. My name is Frances and I'm coming to you from this episode uh, from a seaside village in Suffolk. Um, we are having a uh, little break here um, in Suffolk um, and we've been really blessed with lovely warm sunshine. So um, yeah, we're having a, a really lovely time and the opening shots that you would have seen was me wearing the pale um, jacket that I talked about finishing in the last episode um, on the beach on a, an early morning um, uh, walk on the beach just before, just after even uh, sunrise. So, so talking about um, the jacket, here it is, um, and you will have seen it properly in those opening shots, um, all finished. Um, and um, yeah, let me um, talk you through it. So we've, uh, what can I say? The, we've got the, um, started off with a folded hem. Um, I'll add in a better um, close-up shot to it. But started off with a folded hem. Um, so you're knitting it, you're doing a, a row of purl, um, and then knitting again, and then you fold back and catch that in. Um, and then um, it's knitted with um, intarsia, um, so you can see the uh, intarsia. And the way I do the intarsia to stop it getting too tangled is I make a bobbin of colour for each change. So you can see there's lots of changes where I've gone from the white to the yellow to the white, um, and so and it's knitted all in one piece from the bottom up um, uh, so I just made up lots of bobbins which is winding the yarn round on my hand being careful to keep the tail down um, so that you're pulling out from the tail as you start knitting um, and I shall put a link um, in the notes um, if you're interested so that you can uh, find out how to make those bobbins but I find that works a lot better than using balls of yarn which all get tangled up um, and it makes the change over as you're swapping your old from new yarn as you do with an intarsia makes it a lot um, a lot a much smoother um, uh, knit so um, yeah so I found that work really well um, I'm really pleased with the garment it's um, I think I said to you before it's, it's a statement piece so it does feel quite special to wear it's quite silky um, it's quite warm and in fact I don't I don't think I'm going to keep it on for all of today because it is quite a, a nice sunny day. Um, but uh, it feels really nice to wear, so I am really pleased um, with how it's looking. So, talking about um, silky um, things to wear, my um, first uh, work in progress, if you like, um, is the Nack Staten cardigan, um, which is here. And, right, let's bring it up and show you what we're up to. So that's how far I've got. So when I, uh, on my last episode, I hadn't started, I'd finished the sleeves, but I hadn't started the color work. So you can see there's the color work. And that's actually about half the pattern. Um, and yeah, here's the front. And it, it is it's beautiful. It's looking really lovely. Um, you can't memorize the pattern. Um, it's for every 40 stitches, it's a 40 row repeat, 40 stitch repeat, sorry. Um, so I've got markers in for the, the um, every 40 stitches, but you can't memorize it. There's, there's, too much changing going on however the advantage of that is when I do do a stitch wrong you can't really see it so um, yeah that's that's uh, working it's working well um, but this is where I come to my um, 
story for this episode and that is the start of my learning curve. Um, so I, for some reason, I'm not sure why, but I went in on the Ravelry reviews, having got halfway down with the, the uh, cardigan and I um, noticed that people were saying actually the front of the cardigan comes up quite short and I kind of, I'd looked at how it sat on in the pattern and um, I hadn't really picked up how short it was at the front and when I measured it I thought actually that's not, that is going to be a bit short um, but I'm halfway down the colour work and I'm not about to start ripping that out. Um, so um, what I'm going to do, so the more enlightened knitters on Ravelry that have already done it have, uh, have said that they did some short row shaping at the, at the beginning, those that realised it wasn't going to be long enough, but as I say, that's not going to work for me. However, I'm only part of the way down the pattern, and as you get lower down the pattern, um, so you've got your kind of flowers and things going on at the top, um, and as you're going down, it's what I think of as being a bit of a, sort of like a meadow, if you like. And as you get further down, it's more stalks. Um, and so I thought, well, actually, if I repeat a few of those rows, so the stalks become a bit longer, um, then hopefully I can add a little bit of length into it. So I'm looking to add maybe another three or four centimetres. Um, then that will that will help. And then I'm a lot of knitters, I think most of the knitters, added some more rows at the bottom after they finished the pattern. So I'll look at doing that as well. But I didn't want to add so much in the bottom um, because I think I probably want about an extra five to six centimetres. I didn't want to add so much in the bottom that um, it kind of looked a bit unbalanced and looked more about the, what was going on at the bottom rather than that, that beautiful um, entirety of, sorry, that beautiful um, stranded colour work. So that's what I'm going to do um, and I'll make a note of which rows I repeat or I'll try to remember to do that um, and then I can share that on, on Ravelry as to what I did so um, that's one way of going forward so yeah make I'm noting to myself in the future I need to be looking at the uh, at the Ravelry reviews before I get started and just that could yeah, save me because after all other people have gone to the time and effort of sharing that information so why not make the most of it and equally um, do the same myself um, make sure that um, I keep my Ravelry reviews um, up to date so which I need to I need to be doing so I also noticed that um, the main negative that people talked about um, on the Ravelry reviews was the um, knitting coloured stranded work on the wrong side, so purling um, with, um, on the wrong side and most people or many people like, like myself have got a good system going um, where we hold the yarn, in, well in my case anyway, in both hands um, and uh, I'm English throwing in my right hand the way I usually knit, continental in my left hand picking the yarn um, through, so that works great. So then when comes to doing it on the purling side a lot of people were really struggling with that. I mentioned in my last episode that the way I get round it, um, I hope that's not too noisy for you, it's just a small aeroplane going across, um, the way I, I do it, it um, is that I use the uh, variation on the Portuguese style where the yarn is going from the knitting and around my neck. Um, and that holds the tension because the yarn of course needs to be at the front for when you're, you're purling um, and that holds the tension um, of the yarn um, and then the yarn is just there but it still wasn't quite it was fine for doing one or two stitches but if you were doing more than that it, uh, it was harder and it was also harder when you were catching it in um, that um, the yarn on my left side um, for a float so I bought a ring, which I think I mentioned I got that from Etsy, and what the ring does is it holds the yarn right there where I need it, so it's then easy for me to pick it to make uh, the purl stitches. Um, and uh, yeah, well, I'll have a look and show you how um, I do that. When purling uh, stranded colour work, Fair Isle, um, this is how I hold the yarn so I've got the first yarn and I'm just holding it and throwing it traditional English style. In my left hand um, I have the yarn 
tensioned going round my neck um, and then held in the ring to hold it in the right position. If it's not in the ring, then it's kind of here and it's it's not quite in the right place. So just doing my throwing. So now I'm wanting to take some of the white yarn so the needle goes under, pulls it in here. And then I'm doing some more of here. Now I've got six stitches there so that's too many and I want to catch. So to catch it in, go through the, st the stitch as if to purl underneath the uh, other yarn, yarn round needle to make the stitch and then pull it out so that I've caught the white yarn but I've not actually knitted a, it, knitted a stitch with it. So you can see that's quite easy to do both of those. Under, under, one, two, and catch the yarn again. One, two, and uh, so you can see that it actually therefore does not slow me down by doing it this method. Knitting ferrule is for me as fast on the pearl side, the wrong side, as it is doing it on the right side or the knit, or the next stitches. Okay, so then continuing on the theme of going down the wrong path um, on a on a pattern. Um, do you remember in the last episode I started, a, I decided to start a ranunculus, um, and this is. A lovely pattern um, it it's not surprising it's so popular it's really well written there's lots of photos to explain to you what to do it's really interesting it's quite different from a lot lot of other um, knitting patterns so it's really intriguing um, so there's there is lots to love so off I went and within two days I had created the yoke of my ranunculus um, and what I'm going to actually do actually I am just going to pop off this cardigan and pop on the ranunculus so that you can see um, what it looks like okay right so here is um, my ranunculus so I have got to that point where you start adding in um, the shaping for your size so you don't actually choose your size until you get to that point um, and um, I think there are the parts of it that are perhaps not quite perfect as I was learning as I was going along but on the whole um, I'm really pleased with it you can see this is the tighter of the two necklines that she offers but it's still stretchy enough to easily get over my neck I'm not sure, well, I, I certainly felt I was not feeling it with the yarn. Um, it wasn't the pattern actually, um, but it was actually the yarn. It's a cotton and I'm not sure I even, I'm not sure about the colour, I don't know. Um, but I really wasn't feeling happy about it and I ended up saying, do you know what, I don't think I want to spend how many other more days knitting the rest of the body um, when I don't think I'm going to wear it. So, um, yeah, it, it got, um, you see, it's got popped on a yarn um, and I thought, no, we'll just, we'll pull it out. I left it here so that I could show it to you and um, discuss it with you. Um, interestingly enough, now I'm looking at it and thinking, oh, I don't know, I'm not sure. But my conclusion at the time was actually that I was going to knit it next time in a different yarn, which actually have been something I've been thinking about I'm just going to pull this yarn out for you I've been thinking about for a while um, and this is a silk 
yarn and I can't remember the composition of it so I'll, I'll put it on um, or down in the notes. It is an old yarn that Rowan used to do um, called Sultano and it's incredibly silky and soft and it's like a sort of taped yarn. Um, it's beautiful and I think it would look really, the ranunculus would look really nice in this and to be honest it's a lovely yarn but I'm not sure what to do with it. I, it's, oh, it makes great scarves and you know little bits like that but I've got in, I've got enough, I think I've got five or six of this so I easily got enough to do a ranunculus so I think that would be a really lovely, so I've got a lot on my needles at the moment so when I get to that point then I will um, I'll look at casting that on so okay so that is that right now let's take this off so with the ranunculus on hold um, I decided it was time to cast on the Felicia cardigan so you probably remember I had the lovely um, four ply yak from blue fern yarns in the happiness color which is a yellow um and so i cast that on and you start off by casting that on um by doing the um, top part of the neckband the bit that goes around the neck so you're starting at the top um so you knit that piece of the rib um, and then um you then pick up the stitches around the rib um, and you start knitting down the shoulders increasing as you go and this is where I continue on my learning curve because having looked at the next Staten cardigan I thought oh let's go and have a look on the Ravelry comments for Felicia again lots of lovely comments um, uh, I made, made sure I filtered out because it's actually I think originally a French um, it certainly is available in French and English and more of the comments were French than English so I filtered out the French because my French is not that good and just concentrated on the um, English um, reviews um, and I looked at the pictures and thought hang on that's not how my pattern is coming out so where um, I was coming out increasing on the shoulders um, and you do that with a yarn over so it's making this pretty sort of lacy effect but mine didn't look like that and I realized that I had done something that I do I can do quite often when it's a complicated pattern following it checking it when it's not so complicated you think oh yeah yep got that now I've done the setup row started doing the first few rows of the lace of the lace pattern um, for this cardigan and off I go I'm fine and I'm not going back and checking as often and to be fair there wasn't much in there but yeah I didn't pick up that actually there, there was more of a variation um, in the pattern I thought it was a two row repeat and it was an eight row repeat um, I'm simplifying that it wasn't even that simple but anyway um, yeah I went wrong so um, I'll put in a picture of what mine looked like and it looked quite nice and he had to go and put it in the naughty corner for an hour or two while I thought oh, yeah um, I think we've all been there haven't we you know what do you do and I knew really after giving it a, not really much thought at all I knew I was not going to be happy if I just left it so it had to be ripped back and started again lost a lot of knitting time hence why I feel perhaps I've not got as much to show you as I would like but you know ultimately at the end of the day it's going to be worth it so um, and I want something that I'm proud of proud to wear um, so yeah it wasn't a compromise I wanted to make so right so we undid it picked it with uh, back to just before after I picked up the stitches so I went back to that point and started again and I have I'm just getting it out of my Highland cow bag um, and 
so here we are so I've actually popped it on I need to get some proper barber cord but I've actually popped it on some thread because well two reasons first of all I, I'm just at a stage now where I'm going to start splitting for the sleeves and I wanted to make sure it was generous enough around the sleeves because some of the rubbery really, um, people commented that theirs wasn't um, actually you know I mean I've not got the slimmest arms in the world but it's going to be all right for my arms um, so that's great news um, and here you can see the pattern as you go down which is pretty isn't it whereas all my original one had was just a line or well there were two rows of it but it was just a line of two holes so um, if I pop this on you can get an idea of how it's looking right so this is what it looks like on so far um, it's looking really lovely you can see the raglan sort of lace edging where you're doing the increases and how that's made that lacy um, and it, yeah it's looking really nice so what you've got you've got the rib is built in so you did that little bit of the neckband at the top picked up the stitches and then thereafter the rib is included um, and on the edge you've got an I-cord edging which means you're slipping the pearl stitches on that edging and that gives it a nice rounded edging so that's looking really lovely so as I said I'm going to be splitting for the sleeves now and then it's going to be pretty sure I'm looking at you thinking have I checked the pattern no better check the pattern before I do that but I think it pretty sure it's a straightforward um, stocking stitch going down there and then I think it has quite a big um, rib section um, at the bottom um, and yeah that's certainly the look that I'm thinking because it's going to be a dress cardigan so you want it to sit sort of quite cropped and um, sort of fitted in in there so yeah it's looking really nice really pleased with it um, and um, yeah so what's coming up um, I'm going to share with you at the end of the video some more footage um, of where we're on holiday. Um, it's, a, it's a lovely place, it's somewhere where um, I, we've been coming away since I was five years old so um, yeah a lot of places, a lot of, where are we, I can't find my words, uh, I've been coming for a lot of years is what I'm trying to say and it's somewhere that we really love um, and somewhere that the children really love to come to and, and um, yeah my eldest son brings his children here um, so I'll share some footage of that um, we're yeah, coming into the autumn and I can't quite believe it is now three months since I picked my daughter up from university at um, the end of um, last uh, at the end of her summer term last year the end of her first year so we're now going to be taking her back um, next weekend um, and I'm hoping if all goes to plan I'll get to pop in again to Falmouth Yarns um, I'm looking for some double knitting yarn um, for uh, to knit. So I picked, I bought a pattern um, from um, the Craya Bear, Rebecca Clouds um, uh, Ravelry store. She was offering um, a birthday discount, uh, which was very generous, and so I, I've, I've uh, picked up the. Um, yeah, I'm getting towards the end of the podcast and I can't remember anything um, anyway I'll put the name of the pattern that I'm going to make and a little picture that I'm thinking of making so I'm going to look for the yarn for that um, and actually when I was watching Jane on um, Knitting and Stitches um, the Cornish Knitter podcast um, she um, she was making the field sweater so that looks very nice and there was a certain yarn she said she was getting in for that so while I'm at Stitches cream which is the name of the farmer store I'm talking about I'll have a look for that as well so yeah plenty of things um, still going on um, and um, hopefully I'll have made a lot more progress um, or coming towards the end should I say of the next statin cardigan I can show you how I'm getting on with that because I'm definitely not starting the next project um, until that one's um, got out of the way um, so until then um, thank you so much for watching um, I hope you've enjoyed it and if you have please subscribe 
and help support and uh, grow my channel um, I would so appreciate that that would be really lovely um, and uh, yeah happy knitting and enjoy this last little bit of footage take care bye bye